Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Shamir Shah Project. And in this week's episode, we are going to continue discussing the Ordnance Survey app, the online app this is. In my last episode, which was published last week, the part one of the Ordnance Survey video, we discussed how to discover routes. In this week's episode, I'm going to discuss how you can create your own bespoke route. My name is Shamir Shah. I'm a landscape photographer, passionate adventurer, mountain biker, and a devoted conservationist. A few years ago, my freedom and independence was nearly taken away from doing what I love by becoming a carer for my special needs son. Since then, I've doubled the stakes of my mission to make nature and the outdoors an inseparable and fundamental part of every family. This has now become my project. Before we continue and I show you how to create your own bespoke route using the Ordnance Survey app, I must say that this video has not been sponsored by Ordnance Survey or anybody else. This is just me trying to help you to get outdoors and find a lovely route that you'd like to do. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate an area that I know quite well and an area that I've hiked previously. And I think it's absolutely beautiful and a lovely green space going through some woodlands, going through various trails, three, no, four different woodlands and also through a little golf course as well as around a lake. So I think this would be the ideal place to start and show you the demonstration of creating your own bespoke or custom route. So let's say you lived in Maidenhead and you were going to go visit Ryslip. What you can do is at the top here in the search bar, you can type in Ryslip Common, which is a place you know that you might be visiting and the map takes you straight there once you create the search and what we'll do is we will zoom out and have a quick look at what we see so we know this area is rice lip common and there is a woodland here this is called bayhurst wood i'm not sure why the label isn't coming up but it's called bayhurst wood You've got the North Riding Wood, Mad Bess, Copse Wood. There is a golf course right here, and then you've got the lake. So if I go down here and change the topography to the OS Leisure Maps, this gives you a better indication of what trails are available what the elevation gains or inclines might be and uh, there you go now you can also see the Bayhurst Wood Country Park so I'll zoom back out a little bit and give you an overview of the space we have a parking lot there but we don't want to park there we have a parking space there but we don't want to park there either but where you see this location dropper, the red one, is very close to another parking space there. I don't know why they haven't labeled a P label for parking here, but there is parking right here. So if I zoom in, I'll show you there's a parking right there. And actually along here, there is more parking. We can remove this dropper pin for now because now we know where we are on the map. So when we begin to create the custom route, you go up to routes and you click on create custom route. 
and we have a control panel here and we have the tools panel at the top. We are going to be walking it so we can select that and we know we're going to start at this parking lot over here. So what we can do is use this toolbox to now start creating our route that will be bespoke to the walk we're going to do. Save basically means once you create the route, you can save it. You can cancel any part of the route when you're creating it. Snap, this is snap to path. This only works as it says with national parks, which is this national parks pathways. It only works with that. So we don't really need it here. So we can turn it off. The plot tool is the main tool that is going to create the route for us. If you wish to remove any part of the route, you can use the remove button. If you want to go one step back or two steps back on your route creation, then you can use the undo tool. And the style is something more of a preference to each individual. It's what you feel comfortable with when viewing your map. So you can choose a color or you can make it thinner or thicker. I prefer to stick to the red and the thick route for now because we can always change it later if I find it's a bit confusing. You can also adjust the transparency in case you feel it's too dark and you want to be able to see the other paths and the other labels on the map. So now we've selected the line and the thickness tool. We can get rid of that. The grid reference is for the grid reference on the map in collaboration with the paper maps. So that gives you your grid reference of where we are based on Rice Lip Lido. That includes the Eastings and Northings on a hard copy map. So you know exactly where you are on a hard copy map on a mobile device or on this map here. So let's begin creating our route. So we're going to start from this parking lot right here. Although it's not labeled, I can tell you there is a parking there. And we can see there is a national trail that runs along there, which is part of the Hillingdon Trail. And that's part of what we are going to begin with. So what you do is click on your start point, which is right there. And on the left, you can see a start point has appeared on the control panel. Then we just follow the route, whichever route you choose, and go along that point by point. We've just crossed over a main road, so that's a spot you want to be careful at. And then we've gone into the Rice Slipper Woods Nature Reserve, heading towards Mad Bess. Now that we're here and we think, oh, wait a minute, actually, I would prefer to go around the boundary of the woods because I feel that would be a longer walk and it'll give me more opportunity to see what's around this woodland along the boundary. Then you can always undo and undo or you can remove using the remove tool. So we can carry on this way. Again, we have approached another road. So that's a crossing you want to be very careful at, but we want to cross over and go there. And then perhaps we want to go down the boundary of this Bayhurst Wood as well, then we follow the boundary line. And then you can see there is a boundary there and there is a path there, which is the dotted line. And right here, you can see there's a little pond, which is normally there in the winter 
and in the peak of summer it tends to dry up but there is a little pond there you can sit there have a little picnic have a little sandwich have something to drink and get back on your way so we continue to create the route and we'll go across here but this time instead of going along the boundary we prefer to cut through the wood to have a different point of view and again I want to cut through the wood here and go along the boundary so you keep plotting your route as you feel that is comfortable to you this will also give you an indication of how long the route is and are you able to do it in the time you've allocated so we've got back into close to the Hillingdon Trail next to Copse Wood and we can stop there for a moment and maybe look at the little elevation graph we have here so we know there's a little bit of elevation at different points but more importantly we know we've done 3.9 miles when we get to this point as we carry on we're going to cut across the wood here here there and then what I'd like to do is get to this point and go along this little trail here there's little creeks along here it's not fast flowing water but it's lovely to walk around and go along this area which is a lovely golf course but I want to hug the edge of the lake and some woodland so we go across this little path so now we are walking along one side of the golf course and on the other side is the Ryslip Lido Lake and as we go down here we have also got another section of the Ryslip Woods uh, Nature Reserve which is really beautiful as well so this is a walk I would highly recommend if you haven't done it and you live close by so we just keep following this and then we're going to cut across here which is a tarmac walking crossover from the parking lots around here all the way to the beach and then we go back here and we're back on the Hillingdon Trail and this is where we're going to finish where our car is so if I zoom back out there is our trail that's what we've created we're going to start here and we're going to finish here and you can see it says right there your starting point with a grid reference and the finish point with a grid reference and that hike around there is approximately 6.3 miles that has been confirmed by our finish point and it's also been confirmed by the elevation graph where it says 6.3 if you think you want to change the look of that trail that you've created you can go over to styles and perhaps you want to select a blue one with a thinner line then you can do that that's entirely up to you what you feel is comfortable for you I prefer the red for easy viewing and it tells me exactly where I'm walking what I'm doing so once you've created that you can say oh um, I think I would like to go a bit deeper into this woodland here in this section then what you can do is you can toggle this little point here and bring it across that way and say oh that's nice I think I, I would prefer to go cut through the woodland it's not often advised to go trailblazing through the woodlands if there's no path for the sake of leave no trace and therefore if you feel there is another path there and you just like to dip in and out then you can create another point by clicking in the middle right there and then you can select it and pull it back out so you know you're gonna go into the woodland over the little river and then back to the edge of Copse Wood but if you don't want to do that we can always bring it back in and then you still have the path going 
right across the woodland on a walking path. We can look at this terrain from a different perspective by clicking on the topography maps. The aerial map will give you the view of what you're walking but in terms of the green spaces and a satellite view so you know exactly what you're walking around sort of woodlands what's on the edge of the woodlands in case you wanted to go off in a different direction as you can see there is a golf course which is the Northwood Golf Club and there's the lake which we're going to hug and walk across so you can change the view of your map using this tool down below. Okay, so now we've done that, what we want to do is save the map. So you click on save, call the map, rye slip, common, woodlands, lakes lake and golf course and you can put a little description right here three different woodlands a golf course and the edge of Rice slip Lido and you can have a look at the surface as you're walking and you can sort of determine that it's a grass root gravel root and a bit of a dirt root and 6.27 miles it is a leisurely walk but some might call it moderate so we can push it to moderate who can see my route if you select only me that means only I can see it or only you can see it when you create the route. If you select everyone, then other people can see the route. But everyone is beneficial on the side of actually being able to share this route with a friend. So if you are going to hike with somebody else and you want to share the route with a friend, then select everyone. And of course, down below, hiking, running, cycling or other we're going to be hiking so we'll select that and then we hit save saved in my roots so that's done on the left side that's our route and how do we know that is saved simply go to your roots at the top click on my roots and there you have it rice lip common woodlands lake golf course Just click on that it shows it to you right there the reason it's orange in color is because it is moderate. You selected moderate when saving the file and you click on view root and it loads up the root for you. Now this is saved in your online app. It is now going to be saved also on your mobile app when you log into your mobile app if you've got the premium feature of the ordnance survey. This tool really is available to premium users. It's not expensive, so you can buy it for a year and try it out and see what it's like, or buy it for a monthly subscription and see what it's like. Entirely up to you. I do enjoy it. I buy the yearly subscription. It's around about £25, which isn't much really. So now that we have the control panel here, we've got the options of seeing the mileage we know it's a 6.3 mile hike it's a two and a half around just shy of two and a half um, hours hike so we could suggest to ourselves and say okay you know what we could do it in the morning and then go to the local pub which is right next to the rice slip common parking lot and we know that because we see this symbol here and we know there's a pub or a restaurant there so we could have a meal at lunch then you have the facility of checking out the weather. Let's say you were going to go over the weekend, the coming weekend. Then you can have a look at the weather on Friday, what it's like. 
and Saturday and say, oh, that's a bit of a sunny day, so I might go there Saturday. That's a good idea to do that on that day. Down here, you've got the various options of downloading a GPX file, sending and sharing it with a friend or on social media, or having a fly through. I suggest trying out the fly through so you know from the comfort of your home what you're going to get when you're actually out there. So let's do that. That's the fly through of the route I have just created. You can see the tabs around the route tells you the different towns, the little villages or places of interest nearby. Yeah. Okay, I think we've seen enough of that. Click the close button and we go back here to the aerial view. We can go down here to the topography and change it back to OS Leisure. So that's it. Now you've seen the fly through and you've created your bespoke route. Want to have another look at the elevation? It's right there. So this is the control panel and the control card to your route. If you're happy with what you've seen, then you can click on send and share and click on email, email it to a friend or tweet it to your friend, whatever you'd like to do. If you're happy with that and they are happy with the route, you can export the GPS by clicking right here. And as you can see, within a couple of seconds, that GPX file of the custom route you have just created will be on your desktop to export onto your mobile phone or your Garmin and import it into the app that you choose to use on the day. And it's as simple as that. So that is the overview of how to create a bespoke or how to create a custom route of a hike that you'd like to do. It's quite simple to use. It can get advanced for advanced users. It can be as simple as you want it to be so that as a beginner you can use it. That's not a problem. It's always nice to know that there are tools like this to use so that we can get ourselves outdoors even more. So if you have any questions with regards to how to create this custom route, then please let me know in the comment section of this video and I will be happy to help you further. So I hope this demonstration has provided you with a good understanding of how to use the Ordnance Survey Map in conjunction with creating your own bespoke route. With creating your own bespoke route, you can output the file, the GPX file, and use it in conjunction with your Garmin device. You can use it on your mobile phone, and you can use it on various apps on the mobile phone. You can use it in collaboration with the Ordnance Survey mobile app, which is very good. But I would also suggest and recommend that you take a hard copy map with you. Always carry a hard copy map because if your devices fail by any chance, the battery runs out or you drop it in a river stream or something along those lines and your devices stop working, then you've got the hard copy map to work with. And so in short, there is no substitute for a hard copy map, but it's always fun to create your own bespoke map and carry it on your mobile device or your Garmin so that you have a backup of some kind. Well, that's it folks for this week's episode. Uh, next week's episode is going to be more about the mobile app and using the Ordnance Survey route you created on the mobile app. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel, then please support the channel by subscribing up here or down here. If you've liked what you've seen, then give me a thumbs up and uh, I will truly appreciate that. Thank you very much and I will see you out and about.